event that's being sponsored by West Central Industries and the Resource Center program. There's about a hundred people behind us who are here to have a good time. Right, Andrew? Yeah. Yeah. We're here to uh, party the night away and play some games and have a good time. And I've got my friend Ann here as well. And you've helped at this before. Yep. Why do you help? It's fun. Who comes to this event? A lot of people. It, it's a regional event, right? So people from all over the, the county come and all over the other counties. Yep. And Andrew, did you help decorate for this event? Yeah. Was it hard? No. No? Will you come back and do it again? I suppose. I suppose. Okay. This is a great event. It's designed for families who have a child, teen, or adult with disabilities. Anything from autism to learning disabilities, deafness and hard of hearing issues to uh, Down syndrome, brain injury to anything else you can think of. Uh, it's designed for the whole family to get together and meet other families just like them and have a great time. Right, Andrew? Yeah. So if you're looking for a good time next year, come to the Halloween Happenings by West Central Industries and the Resource Center Program. And you're watching the Do You Know Show, and we're moving on. All right, here at the Channel 8 studio, we're talking United Way, and as always, we're here with Renee. Renee, I heard that you're at about 25% of your goal. Is that correct? We are. That's about a quarter of our goal of a million dollars. Excellent. So $250,000, and uh, you're well on your way uh, with all the help and support of our community. Speaking of our community, we have a lot of company campaigns going on in our community. Tell us about that. 
Fall is the typical time where companies do payroll deduction for their employees, where they'll offer that for United Way, and it's a really popular way to give because you can give per paycheck instead of cutting a check for one lump sum, and you have your tax receipt at the end of the year. A lot of companies are turning in their campaigns, but if you're from a, a business that hasn't had one and you're interested in that, please contact us. We'd love to come out and, and do a presentation and visit with your management. Very good. And also, if you are an individual that wants to contribute but aren't part of a company, what can they do? Well, you know, it takes all of us together to make the what, what United Way work make United Way work happen. And you, we welcome donations from individuals, families, and they can be given right to United Way, mailing it to our office at uh, we're at PO Box eight nine five Wilmer. But contact us at two three five one zero five zero, and we'll help you get that form filled out. All right, very good. Uh, you just had a, a great event uh, in the community. We talked about it. It was the art event at O'Neill's. Tell us uh, everything we need to know about that. We have some amazing artists in the region and amazing people giving their gifts to make that event happen. It happened uh, in October and we had over 100 people attend. We had 42 pieces of wonderful art. We had a wine pool. But all in all, $6,000 was raised for early childhood in the region. So we're so grateful for everyone who participated and uh, it was a wonderful evening at O'Neill's. Very good. And uh, word has it that you bought a bus, is that correct? <laughs> I didn't buy a zoo. Yes, I bought a bus. And, uh, and we, uh, we were... United Way was gifted with $60,000 from Janio Turkey Store this summer, and it's an amazing gift. And we were just on the back burner thinking, what are we going to do? We're starting to have these issues with our RV. It's a 1993 RV. Well, we got this gift, and we went to St. Cloud and visited with Wilmer Bus first and got some great feedback and advice from them. Thank you to them. And we've ordered the bus. It'll be in February. So that was really exciting. Very good. That's good. And Well, I know I've seen the, uh, the Gromobile RV around, and it's having engine problems some other things. So perfect timing for uh, you to get that uh, going, and it's going to be interesting to see how it looks once it's uh, a bus instead of an RV. Um, also, give us an update on the Imagination Library. You know, Imagination Library is our reading program. It's to get children vested in reading. And the program's been around for probably 15 years in this region. Really exciting. The state of Minnesota, the new statistic, 10 years ago, 59% of our kids going into kindergarten were not prepared. Now it's 41%. We know that Imagination Library is one of those tools. Very exciting. Just recently heard that 51% of the kids in the kindergarten class in Wilmer alone this year were on Imagination Library. That's huge. And it, again, we have 1,950 kids enrolled in the whole region getting that book. This book is free to families. If you want a tool to prepare your kids, get them interested in reading or a chance to bond with your kids, please sign up for the program. If you have a child, birth to five years old, you're, they're eligible for it free. Awesome. It's uh, another uh, great uh, resource in our community, and uh, we appreciate everyone that's involved with it. appreciate all your hard work in uh, doing the things you do for United Way. Again, if there's any more information that you like uh, about anything that goes on with United Way, be sure to give them a call at 235-1050. Thanks, Renee. You are watching Do You Know?
Hi, Jody Wambeck with the Wilmer Early Childhood Family Programs and Early Childhood Initiative. You have just seen some of the great pictures from our eighth annual fire station event. Hopefully you were able to join us for the night. It was a great turnout. This month I want to talk to you about our WOW event, which remember stands for World of Wonder. This event will be held at Redeemer Lutheran Church in December. Redeemer Preschool is putting that on and they will have a lot of great activities for us that night. So please check out our Candy Kids Ready website for further details or be looking for flyers around the community. Next, I want to talk a little bit about scholarships. There are scholarships available to families who qualify to attend a parent-aware rated childcare and or preschool. And if parents, if you want to find out if you qualify for those scholarships or more information about those, feel free to contact me at Community Ed and Rec and the number will be listed below and I can answer any of those questions for you. And those scholarships can only be used at parent-aware rated sites and information about that will be on our Candy Kids Ready website. I will have a little icon on there that you can click on to um, attain more information about parent-aware ratings. And the other thing, with the holidays coming up, something I want you to think about is great gift ideas is the gift of books. Books are a wonderful way to encourage imagination, to learn literacy, language, develop all sorts of wonderful skills, and be sure to look at nonfiction books as well as fiction books. And if your child does go to a child care center, daycare, preschool, um, or even go talk to the librarian, but talk to your child's teacher, daycare provider, they may have some favorite books that your child likes. So be sure to visit with people about potential gift ideas for your children. You are watching Do You Know? Good afternoon, this is Susan Matson, Master Gardener through the University of Minnesota Extension Service. And I'm out at Green Lake Nursery on a rainy fall afternoon, looking at some fall color, some good additions to your yard for uh, fall reds, greens, yellows, and uh, oranges. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it over to Ella Roth, who is with me. And she's going to talk a little bit about different varieties, also planting, when you can continue to plant. And um, turn it right over to Ella. Thanks, Susan. Hi, everybody. Um, it is still a good time to plant. You can see the beautiful colors that we have here, and it's a great time to choose a shrub for fall color. Uh, we plant up until it snows. Um, as long as you can dig a hole in the ground, we recommend planting. So don't be afraid to come in, and the great thing is that mostly everything's on sale right now. So we still have a good selection of beautiful shade trees, like this autumn blaze maple. It's a cross between a silver maple and a rubrum red maple, the ones that turn red in the fall. So you get a beautiful fall color with, with the fast, fast growth. It gets about uh, 50 to 60 feet tall. Wonderful shade tree. Uh, I would like to you not to plant it in clay, though. They don't mind sand or good peat, black dirt. Um, over here on the left, we have the common sumac. It's a hybridized cut leaf sumac. Uh, it's wonderful for a hillside or for erosion control. Great fall color. And they get about six to eight feet tall as well. This beauty, this beautiful red plant here, green all summer. This is called burning bush. I guess you can guess why. Um, it gets about six to eight feet tall, but it would have to be planted in a sunny area in order to get this fall color. Um, let's not forget about the magnolia. Um, this is one of the hardiest ones for Minnesota. It's called Royal Star. It is uh, kind of a shrub type of magnolia. They do very, very well here. It's considered a small tree. It will get about 20 to 25 feet. Beautiful white flowers in the spring. Far over here on the right, Susan, Yes, that is a grow low sumac. It doesn't look anything like the sumac you're familiar with over here, um, but it is a good plant for lake shores or erosion control, meaning it will spread underground. Um, if you rub the leaf, Susan, it has kind of a citrusy smell. Wonderful fall color, doesn't get too tall. We're looking maybe three to four feet. And right in front of that is an unusual spirea. It's green all summer with a blue-green colored foliage. Blooms once, very early, white flowers. Doesn't get over three feet, very easy to, to grow. Very seldom needs pruning, wonderful red fall color. 
These are some of the greatest selections that we have here this fall. We also have a few of these beautiful uh, crotons, which are a wonderful fall pot that you'd have to bring in. And the other thing I want to mention, Susan, something to think about. This product is called uh, Liquid Fence. It's for deer and rabbit repellent. It is an organic product. It's not poisonous to your dogs or cats, but it does taste really bad. It's made from egg putrescence, so it smells like a dead animal. And it deters them because they think a predator is in the area like a fox, maybe, or a coyote. And it's especially useful on plants such as the burning bush, which are very sweet tasting to those rabbits and mice. You also might want to consider, especially if you have evergreens, putting a box of decon underneath the evergreens for mice damage that want to nest there in the winter time and also using this product on the foliage itself of your arborvitaes. There was so much damage from deer last winter on your arborvitaes. So good to know. So take it over, Susan. All right, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions because I have been planting some hostas over the last couple of weeks. And I was wondering if I needed to put a fertilizer or a plant food like Osmocote in with them in the fall, or do I wait until spring? Uh, we don't recommend fertilizing in the fall. You don't want to have the plant get out of sync with the weather. They're just starting to go dormant. Um, you would want to make sure to cover them this fall, though, especially if they're newly planted, and by covering I mean good clean straw or a good heavy dose of leaves but wait till the very last minute to do that you want the ground to be totally cold you don't want to mulch in the warmth of the soil so and then next spring go ahead and fertilize and while we're on the subject of planting maybe you could tell us a little bit about putting in tulip bulbs and other spring blooming bulbs yeah, this is a great time to do that, and um, even on a day like today, it would be easier to dig, but tulips especially, you can plant until the ground is frozen and you can't dig the hole. Your daffodils and crocus and such, they should be getting in the ground now, but the tulips can go for a little, little longer. If you're concerned about the mice digging in them up, or chipmunks, or anything like that, you can just put a piece of chicken wire over the top of the ground once you've you've planted and maybe hold it down with some sod staples and that's really helpful. All right, I wanted to remark something about liquid fence. I remember talking to one of your employees a few years ago who said he got it, some of it on his hands and he was eating his lunch and couldn't <laughs> figure out what it was. <laughs> That was the bad smell, and it is true. It does have a very strange smell, and it, and some of the products actually affect the inner sinuses and inner hairs of the nose of the animal, and so they are repelled by it because of that. They're not going to gag and fall over dead, but they won't be able to come close to eating it or chewing on it or um, digging it up or anything else that you might run into in the fall. So, Ella, can you think of anything else for fall planting or for fall color? Well, there's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, this is only one variety of maple that we're showing you here. Um, we have a lot of beautiful sugar maples. Sugar maples are those ones that have that clear orangey-red color. We have a couple varieties of those, but they are going to be twice as slow a gr grower as this plant here, which is the Autumn Blaze. We also have some Norway maples that have a beautiful yellow fall color, real fluffy big leaves, um, grow in a ball shape. They're just beautiful. And also remember, for what you pay for in a nursery is the grafting of this tree. Remember I said it was a cross between a red and a silver. Well, you'll see a, a bump at the bottom of each of the trees here at our nursery. That's because they've all been grafted for a, a reason. And whether it's to be seedless, to be short, or to be colorful, each one of our trees is going to have that little bump. So that's part of what you pay for, is the research. And so, um, just to, to enlighten our, our audience, what do you normally would pay for? A good shrub or a good tree um, that would, uh, like you're talking about a certain size tree, uh, certain colors. Sometimes people are curious about what you would pay for a good product. Well, our trees 
can start anywhere from $45 up to $325. So actually, you know, the bigger the price, the bigger the tree. Plus you're also paying for the grafting and the research behind it to get the color. Um, so smaller trees are going to be like the $45 range. This one right here is $125. That's full price. Right now everything's on sale, so remember that. Most of the shrubs, they start at $20 for the spirea, and they can go all the way up to $45 for a beautiful hydrangea. Um, the, bur the burning bush here is $35. That's full price. So there's a, we try to reach all price ranges. And also remember, Susan, in the spring, we have that big cooler in the back room, and we do carry beer root trees, and we can hold back shrubs if you want a special order from us in the early, early spring before we pot or in the late fall. So we're trying to help you both ways. So a lot of, lot of trees in the cooler, not in a pot, not in dirt, easy to take home, easy to plant. Just make sure that the roots are kept wet all the time and you water well after planting. So stop in and see our cooler next spring too. Well, thank you very much. It's been really good to be out here among the flowers. And even though we're getting a little bit of rain this afternoon, we're you certainly welcome that, especially in the fall. And uh, we'll see you next month with Do You Know.